It came down to the wire in Dunedin, a firecracker in the Forsyth Bar Stadium. New Zealand have beaten England in the first test, but man, it was close. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel. Here with you throughout the summer series and beyond, so hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now then, before the game, the talk was of two really aggressive attacking teams going at it. And that was certainly what played out and defences were really aggressive on both sides too. So for the majority of this game, it felt like either team could really break through at any moment. And as such, it, I found it really thrilling and exciting throughout. England got off to a decent start, but Marcus Smith missed a, a very kickable penalty. And unfortunately, that will come back to bite England in the end. Another theme that happened throughout the, uh, the game was that the New Zealand scrum was probably dominant uh, for the majority, with Ethan de Groot having a fine outing on the loose head. It was picked up in commentary, and I thought the same myself, because I actually used to scrummage like this too. He's high and wide, uh, and although he got a good hit with his right shoulder, knocking Will Stewart back repeatedly, he then proceeded to go through and stand up, which you're not allowed to do. But New Zealand got the benefit of that early doors uh, and marmalising a couple of England scrums, really, which led to a New Zealand try. The first try of the game on penalty advantage, uh, Damian McKenzie looking up to see acres of space wide, kicking it to him for Severus Reese to get over in the corner for a try after being back after such a long layoff. So delighted for him um, to get back on the scoring sheet there. Something to point out. Furbank had made a tackle on the on the other side of the pitch, so it is Marcus Smith standing in at fullback for that point. I wonder if roles had been reversed there, whether Furbank would have got across in time. Smith looked like he was absolutely gassed, to be honest, even that early in the game, and wasn't sprinting to get across. Great execution by New Zealand, but I wonder if roles had been reversed there, whether Furbank would have made the tackle. England was showing lots of promise, though. Moving the ball really quickly and accurately... And some great counter-attacks, Smith getting Furbank away and then Alex uh, Mitchell with some real quick darting move, movement. The speed of the ball that England were getting was going really, really well for them. But they were kicking the ball through a lot. They're getting into the 22 and England of four, four or five years ago used to do this a heck of a lot. And it was quite frustrating because that seemed to be their only tactic. That's not the case for this England team, but I thought they chipped through possibly a little bit too often. <clears throat> That being said, one of those chips led to Damian McKenzie getting pushed out in the corner. England did a fantastic dummy drive. A rear peel sent Chandler Cunningham South charging towards the line. Didn't quite make it, but Atoji picked up to score. And it was 5-7 after about 20 minutes. And it was fierce. As I said in the intro, it felt like teams could break through at any moment. England's defence gambling all the time at getting up off the line, really trying to put pressure on people. Damian McKenzie was cutting shapes and just, he had so many good running options off him that he could always find like a hole or a half, goal, half hole, which meant that New Zealand kept momentum going forward for the majority of the time. It looked like New Zealand were the better attacking team, certainly through these opening phases. Finn Baxter, onto the pitch. Injury to Joe Marlett. Now, for those that watch the Premiership all season, Finn Baxter really has been the best loose head at Harlequins this year. So uh, I had no doubt that he'll come on and do a very good job. And I'm just looking forward. His work rate is phenomenal. His little ability to catch and pass, little tip passes, is brilliant. And he makes a ton of tackles as well, uh, along with being a very solid scrummager. So although on the face of it, you might go all that experience off the pitch, etc., etc., I don't think this weakened England in any stage whatsoever. But after that try, England dropped the next kickoff. And this is so crucial in the game now. It just is such a momentum shift. Followed another big New Zealand scrum. It was a real theme of the first half in particular. Uh, New Zealand moved the ball wide. Perifetta at fullback. Brilliant feat to beat Ben Earl. Put in Ardi Surveyor galloping over in the corner. Now, with Ben Earl here, he got caught on his own a little bit, now, but he's a great defender. The problem was that he initially bit inwards to go towards the ball, then had to bounce out to go and try and get to Perifetta. Perifetta then did the footwork, which meant Earl was all over the place and he kind of just collapsed in front of himself, to be honest. It was the fact that he had to move direction three times that, that undid him in the end. Brilliant play from Stephen Perifetta. 
Damian McKenzie missed the wide conversion, though. He missed the previous one as well. So 10-7 now to New Zealand. Goal kicking, not the best on this day, that's for sure. But England win the next kickoff. New Zealand uh, just joggled it a little bit, but England chipped through again. Uh, again, you know, these are marginal decisions and they clearly identified they maybe want to try and get through into the backfield and keep putting pressure on New Zealand. But did they get the benefit from them today as much as they could have done if they kept the ball in hand? Hard to say. Hard to say. John McCulling himself was down with an ankle injury. He seems to get a lot of lower limb um below the knee injuries I'm just worried long term whether this is going to be a concern for him he needs to do some hardening there maybe get things wrapped before the game I'm not sure but this, like this is several games that I've seen him go down with sort of lower leg injuries another theme of this first half and it showed up with New Zealand winning turnovers and penalties was at their defensive rucks England just lost their detail a little bit in attack Sending one man in to clear rucks when you always need two, or typically you need two unless you get a real good carry. And New Zealand was so good at identifying that. Getting in over the ball, either stealing it and then playing or winning turnover penalties. Um, The other thing that England, I think, failed on in the first half, and it's something that this player has been brilliant at, and I've highlighted it in many videos in the last six months or so. And this is that England were getting no benefit from the aerial game. They lined Tommy Freeman up to go and chase his kicks several times because he is so very, very good at it. But he didn't. I'm not sure if he won any in the first half. And that was causing England problems because that's just another source of possession that they weren't getting. And I think if you looked at possession stats in the first half, England was certainly on the negative in that respect. Just before half time, George Martin did a brilliant counter ruck, pushing through uh, Scott Barrett, and it led to. T- Scott Barrett landing on TJ Perinara's knee. TJ Perinara back after such a long layoff as well. Like Immediately, I was just like, screamed at no, because you hate to see that for, for any player, but especially one who's such a good guy as TJ Perinara. He bounced up, tried to play on, made it through to uh, half time, but didn't come out for the second half. However, that led to a scrum, uh, which England defended pretty well, uh, got off the base it was just in New Zealand territory this scrum the, just before half time the clock had run out and you know you look at a lot of teams there and you'll go okay let's try and play we can try and play from here it's not a problem but New Zealand played and played and played they went through many many phases I, I would say over 10 and New England just slowly pegged them backwards and backwards before eventually winning a turn a penalty at the breakdown for holding on through Ollie Lawrence which Mar- Marcus Smith kicked for 10-10. I thought Damian McKenzie had a really good game overall, but times like this, I just think game management, match management, energy management, I think you get to half time with the lead and then you go from there. I thought that was a weakness there from New Zealand that they didn't clear their lines just before half time and it gave England or it would have given England a huge amount of energy going into the, the half time break. Early into the second half now and England win a scrum penalty. Now, this is what we were talking about in the first half with the group getting a good aggressive hit on, but then staying wide with his head out of the scrum and slightly standing up. The referee was trying to help New Zealand at this scrum. He was trying to keep the game flowing by screaming, get the ball out, get the ball out. But New Zealand wanted a penalty themselves. And off the basis of what happened in the first half, they probably thought they could have got it. However, I have no doubt that there were probably some words spoken at half time, and England got this penalty, even though they were going backwards. Which Smith missed. Another goal-kicking error from the two mercurial 10s here. That would have put England away, 13-10 ahead. And then, uh, you know, a real good start to the second half after a brilliant end to the first. But England got the ball back. And their attacking play was absolutely rapier-like during this period. They were choosing speed over shape. That just means they were playing whatever was in front of them. They were just trying to take that space in front of them because it was there. And they went multi-phase. Uh, Marcus Smith was had people on strings. He put Chandler Cunningham South through a hole. Tommy Freeman went through a hole and almost scored himself. And then England showed great patience to first just drive away. But then when the chance was there... It actually came very early. I think only a couple of drives before Marcus Smith called for the ball, flung it wide for Emmanuel Faye Waboso to walk in in the corner. And that was 10-15 to England. 
with another conversion missed, but this one was from wide out a much tougher kick. New Zealand took action about that scrum problem straight away, taking off Ethan De Groot, who I thought was really good throughout the first half, not just his scrummaging, but round the park as well. So real physical play. And uh, at the same time, Dan Cole came on to equal the male propping record of Jason Leonard. Um, so congratulations to Coley on that. Shortly after, New Zealand got a penalty to tag it back to 13-15, and it was a very tight game there, really tight at that point. England swapped their halfbacks. Um, Alex Mitchell off, Ben Spencer on, um, Marcus Smith off, Finn Smith on, and it looked like those two players are much more adept at managing the game and managing the field. That's their sort of their real key point of factor. So it looked like England were trying to dominate territory in this final period of the game when it was really tight. And also probably Finn Smith is probably a slightly more consistent goal kicker as well. So that all made sense to me. However, they weren't dominating the territory. Ben Spencer was sticking up his big box kicks and England was still getting no reward in the air. New Zealand absolutely dominant in that factor of the game. Uh, Damien McKenzie, um, Geordie Barrett and both wingers were exceptional in the air for New Zealand. And that's something England would definitely want to try and improve on next week. And New Zealand were playing through some phases and actually tried to uh, do some game management themselves. So there was a brilliant like a grubber through to the corner after several phases. And England just looked rushed at this point. Uh, it was George Furbank going back. He had Marcus Smith inside and both of them just looked a little bit stressed. Even though there wasn't a huge amount of pressure on them, Furbank turned and kicked a short kick out to touch where if Marcus has had his head up inside and was screaming for the ball, there was tons of space and time for that pass to go to him with a much better angle and much better chance of getting better territory. So attacking platform for New Zealand and it led to a penalty. They drove and drove and drove and eventually um, got it and it was kicked over 16-15 in the lead and suddenly the momentum of the game changes now. That scoreboard pressure changes everything. And I said about Furbank being rushed, Bowden Barrett, the most calm individual, well, one of the most calm individuals in world rugby, rushed the kick himself. And this was something that New Zealand had been brilliant at throughout the game so far. Like just move, when they felt pressure, they could move it, find space to make a quality kick. And New Zealand's kicking was overall very good in this game. But Bowden rushed this one and that gave England an attacking platform inside New Zealand territory. But in a change of tactics, England went for a line-out catch and drive, which got it got sacked basically it collapsed to the floor just afterwards Scott Barrett then dived on the ball knocking it downwards and I think he got away with the one there just because the mall's collapsed I don't think you're then allowed to dive on it but he did get away with it so fair play that led to a scrum New Zealand after a couple of dodgy close resets real close resets when the ball when the scrum went down before the ball could come in they then got a penalty um, Fletcher Newell on the tight head side for New Zealand scrums really low and he went down the first couple of times but then he got it perfectly right on the third attempt and a big scrum for New Zealand got them a scrum penalty and it cleared their lines and really this felt like it was you know moving towards the end of the game that was a big big turnaround from an attacking England perspective to then New Zealand win the penalty win the scrum and then get down into England's territory again and as I've mentioned before, New Zealand were getting the better of the kicking battle as far as I'm concerned. A couple of high balls on Furbank uh, led to him getting absolutely banged by Reese uh, a couple of times. And although Furbank did really well, again, it was just pressure on pressure on pressure. England couldn't get out of their own territory. And eventually, um, Alex Coles made a no-arms tackle. This was clear as day. Which led to a penalty in the 77th minute and it just looked right. OK, whack this one over New Zealand, a four-point game and it's going to be very tough then for England to get down and score a try. But the shot clock ran out. <laughs> it's only the second time I've ever seen it after Owen Farrell did it for England. Damien McKenzie looking bemused. But at the end of the day, this took like a minute, over a minute out of the game. Went right at the end when they got the lead, deep in England's territory. To be honest, I think if they knew that was going to be the situation anyway, they would have still taken that. Obviously, they'd have preferred to score, probably. Um, but that led to a scrum, another one that New Zealand really made a mess of. But they just went a bit aggressive at the next breakdown, which gave England a penalty. Kicked a touch by Finn Smith. 
a line-out. And contrary to what they did previously, England just played really fast and loose. They hit a wide ball into the mid into midfield, which was around about the New Zealand 10-metre line. So they're in territory here. They're in territory. If they get a penalty, then it's kickable. Um, but England just kept going. And they didn't really get great go-forward ball, but they, they played wide and they played wide again, and it led to a breakdown um, turnover penalty. That was it. Ball kicked off. Full-time New Zealand win, 16-15. And... Yeah, you could probably tell it in my voice. I'm questioning the tactical decisions there at the end. It looked like England were four points down and trying to get a try, whereas they were one point down and should have been trying to win a penalty, in my opinion. And, you know, the way you do that is to probably keep the game a little bit tighter. Make sure you resource those breakdowns as much as you can. Put pressure on that defence. Keep stressing them and keep putting pressure on the referee as well to make decisions where you can. And I just thought England could have done that a little bit better in those final phases but overall a brilliant game a really exciting thrilling game two tries a piece so not like a you know not a roller coaster you know try here try there kind of game defenses were so aggressive that it was kind of never going to be that way I don't think for New Zealand I thought they dominated the air I thought they dominated the breakdown and mostly the scrum as well I think New Zealand were probably the better side and and deserved this win. England have got a few things which I'm sure they'll be able to uh, patch up fairly quickly for next weekend. So hopefully we'll see another really fantastic game there. Interestingly, with these two Mercurial 10s that are goal kickers, the goal kicking was bad for both teams. Um, I lost track of, I think England maybe missed eight points in New Zealand, four or, or seven or something like that. So it was real close and goal kicking could really have come down to it. Do you pick a more consistent goal kicker? Do you keep uh, true to the um, style that you're trying to play the game? Some big decisions for coaches, really, because the goal kicking was not really up to standard today. OK, that's what I think. Um, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.